dear learners welcome to tea paste and disease management well you will be introduced to various paste and diseases of the tea plantation now first have a look on tea paste as we all know that tea plants are evergreen and perennial that is cultivated mostly as a monoculture tea plantation thus provides a suitable conditions for a paste to feed and to be it the plantation supplies plenty of food for the paste throughout the year and thus many species of insect mites and nematodes infest tea plants and cause damage to the plants about 300 species of insect mites and nematodes are active in tea areas however all of them are not economically important so first let's discuss about different types of tea paste the number of paste found in the old tea growing countries of asia including china india bangladesh sri lanka indonesia is much higher than those in africa and other countries who is started growing tea in more recent times now let's see the number of tea paste occurring in different region of the world so if we divide the countries into different uh, global section the highest number of paste are recorded from the north asian section and the countries are china japan and korea the total number of paste recorded from this uh, global section is 219 the next paste that is uh, 136 number of paste are recorded from south asian section this sections includes countries like bangladesh Myanmar, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Thailand and Vietnam. Then from the East African sections the countries are like Kenya, Malawi, Rwanda, Tanzania and Uganda. Total number of paste recorded is 39. The lowest number is recorded from South American countries like Argentina, Brazil and Peru and the paste recorded is only 4. So this is about the occurrence of different insect and paste in various three growing region of the world. Now come to the classification of tea paste. Generally the tea insect paste infest various part of the tea plants including leaves, stem, roots, flowers, but the maximum number of paste occurs on the foliage. Thus on that basis tea paste can be classified into three categories these are leaf and shoot paste stem and branch paste and tea seed paste now uh, what is the nature of tea paste basically the tea paste may be sucking paste chewing or leaf eating in nature now let's have a look on leaf and shoot paste of tea plantations there are various types of leaf and shoot paste the first of all is the mites Among the mites different kinds are like red spider mites scarlet mite pink and yellow mite and purple mite how they damage the plant basically they are sucking type of paste the second is helopeltis or tea mosquito bug the tea mosquito bug is a sucking insect that causes extensive damage in tea during winter its populations comes down and reappears from february march in the north eastern part of india third is the caterpillars caterpillars are of different types these are looper bunch caterpillar and red slug so basically these caterpillars feed on mature leaves of tea the next one is thrips the thrips cause heavy damage by feeding on the buds tender leaves and older tea under plucking then aphids the adults and nymph of aphids suck sap from the tender stems bud petioles and lower surface of the leaves along the midrib the last one is jacinth these are small insect and the nymph and the adults of this insect basically the sap of the young leaves and occasionally the tender stem of the growing shoots the flash room flash room the larva of flash worm attacks a few top leaves tying them together then a scale insect and mealybugs 
this type of paste basically are sucking paste which attack the foliage stem and roots of the tea bushes these are some leaf and shoot paste of tea so these are some leaf and shoot paste of teas now let's have a look on different stem and branch paste of tea plantations among the tea uh, stem and uh, branch paste of tea the first one is stem borer so the larva of borer bores into the tea, tea stem mostly one or two years old tea plant then coxifer grub this is a common paste basically in india and bangladesh the grub attacks the roots of young plants below three years of age then carpenter the caterpillars of carpenter feed on the tea bark coccha for grub the common this is the common paste available in india and bangladesh the grub attacks the roots of the young plants which are below three years of age then the next one is carpenter moth the caterpillars of carpenter moth feed on the tea bark. Then the brown kicket. It is one of the most destructive pests in nursery. It lives in burrows in the soil and at the night it comes out of the burrows and cuts off the leaves and tender shoots and often drags them into the burrows in the soil. So these are the tea stem and branch paste. Now come to the tea seed paste. Among the tea seed paste, tea seed bark is one of the common paste and this bark sucks the shape of the seed cotyledon and as a result of which a white tea spats develops and thus it infested seed do not attain maturity and ultimately fall down from the tree. Now come to the tea diseases. So, disease causes various harm to the tea plants ranging from significant reduction in crop yield, date of young and mature plant, poor frame formations, a great setback in recovery from pruning, especially medium prune, and to the total failure of the nursery plants. So, now what are the causal organisms or causal factors for these diseases? In tea plantations, uh, there are various causal factors and they are like fungi, algae and bacteria, then animal parasites, adverse conditions of soil and climate, then mechanical damage and the virus. However, the bacterial and viral diseases and those caused by animal parasites are not so serious in tea crops and have no commercial importance. The tea plants are mostly infected by the fungal diseases. So now let's discuss the tea diseases and their classifications. The diseases which commonly occur in tea can be classified into two broad categories. These are primary disease and the secondary disease. So which are actually primary diseases? The primary diseases are those which can cause death of the healthy tissues or the bushes even under the best growing condition. And on the other hand, the secondary diseases are those which attack the bushes only after the health of the plant is impaired due to cultural or some environmental stresses. Thus, the primary and secondary diseases can be further categorized into different groups on the basis of the site of major infestations on the tea bushes as a root disease, stem disease and leaf disease. Now, let's have a look on some major tea diseases and their occurring countries. The first one is the leaf diseases. The most important leaf diseases are the blister blight. Occurring countries are China, Taiwan, Japan, India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka and Malaysia. Then red rust. The countries are China, India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Central Africa, uh, Uganda and Peru. Then barge eye spot which occur in countries like China, Japan, India, Sri Lanka and Indonesia. Then black rot, which is seen in countries like India, Indonesia and Sri Lanka. Anthracnose, which is seen in China, Japan and Taiwan. Then reticular blight, which is available in the countries like Japan and Taiwan. The last one is scab, 
The scab diseases are seen in countries like Malawi, Tanzania, Mozambique, Uganda and Brazil. Now come to the stem diseases. So what are the stem diseases? The first one is Brands canker. This Brands canker is seen in the countries like Japan, India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Taiwan, Malawi and Kenya. Then another one is thorny stem blight, which is seen in India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and Colombia. Then wood rot, which is seen in India, Sri Lanka, and Kenya. Then what about the root diseases? The different kinds of root diseases are like brown root rot and red root rot. These diseases are uh, seen in the countries like China, India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia and Malaysia. Then the next one is Diplodia root rot which is seen in the countries like Indonesia, Malaysia and Malawi. Then black root rot this is also seen in Japan, India, Indonesia, Malaysia and Central Africa. So these are some diseases which are mainly affect the tea plantations. Now uh, come to the management part of this tea disease and paste. First of all, the paste management. So uh, there are various methods of paste management followed in various tea growing region of the world. To limit the use of pesticide, basically the cultural and other non-chemical management practices can be followed. And some of such practices are like cultural operation such as pruning, plucking, weed control, which can be done to reduce the incidence of paste attack. Then second one is use of resistant varieties, which is important component of non-chemical paste management practices. Then manual removal of infested parts, heat treatment of the soil, use of light traps are some mechanical method of paste control. Use of plant produce product like azadirectin, which is obtained from the seed kernel of neem tree have been found effective against pink and purple mites and caterpillar. Now come to the management of diseases. Uh, the basic management practices aim on these two approaches is like avoiding the introduction of pathogen into areas where the disease is not present, then lowering the disease severity. And many cultural practices are followed based on the two approaches. These are like in the countries like India and Sri Lanka, cover crops like Guatemala grass are grown for 18 to 24 months prior to tea planting to protect tea plants from root diseases. Then the skiffing of the infected tea shoots, that is the removal of soot at a height of 2 to 3 inches from the harvesting or plucking table have been practiced to reduce the blister blight in some Asian countries. Then short pruning cycle helps to reduce the black rot infestations. Use of disease resistant cultivars, tea varieties such as Indonesians, Rony, Cuman were reported as resistant to grey blight in Pakistan. Now the biggest challenge of global tea industry is to produce a good quality tea which are free of pesticide residue while at the same time ensuring social and environmental sustainability under the changing climate. The timing of various operations like pruning, plucking, adoption of insect and disease management practices are restricted by the extreme weather event in most of the tea growing countries. The changing climate also results in emergence and spread of disease and pest. The climate change induce changes basically in China were estimated to increase the cost of pest and disease management too. 78.69 US dollar per hectare. As tea production is controlled by xenotype environment and management, implication of climate change are felt at locations, felt at the regional as well as the country level. Therefore, it is necessary to focus on the location specific integrated disease management and integrated pest management practices considering the site requirement in order to address the issues of a country and the global tea industry as a whole. And with this, we came to the end of today's discussion. Thank you.